friends in the series which we are doing on the making of contemporary India from 1950 to 1990s. Uh, today we will talk about uh, the visual media in the context of cinema uh, on the theme the public sphere. In the earlier lectures we talked about the various uh, media for example the print media we also talked about television and uh, today we will talk about audio visual media in that context cinema is an important uh, kind of a development from 1895 onwards since the arrival of the cinematograph and how it was able to create that kind of an impact in the 20th century and how the cinema as an audio visual medium it was able to influence so many people at the same time and the moving images uh, on the celluloid they, they were able to create that kind of an impact and many a times we also see that apart from apart from uh, the prime uh, concern of uh, the issue of entertainment where cinema is being referred to uh, as a source of entertainment we also find that it was also being used uh, as a source of communication information as well as education so taking into account the various aspects which have been associated with cinema uh, we also find that at different points of time how it was also uh, being used as an instrument of propaganda uh, it happened during uh, the times of national movement as well that some of the leaders uh, of the national movement they used cinema uh, as a medium of propaganda so uh, some of the readings which uh, one can refer when one is talking about cinema as an audio visual medium uh, ar baji 50 years of talkies from 1931 to 1981 shoma a chatterjee subject cinema object women a study of the portrayal of women in indian cinema gautam calls cinema and the indian freedom struggle tm ranchandra edited 70 years of indian cinema 1913 to 1981 firoz rangunwala 75 years of indian cinema so some of uh, these books uh, they can be referred in the context of understanding cinema as a medium uh, of entertainment and for the way it has been used for other purposes apart from being uh, a medium of art as well and at the same time the kind of uh, commer commercial aspect which was associated with cinema that any film which is being made uh, it is some sort of a costly affair and when filmmakers they are making films their may also uh, their intention is also uh, to recover the kind of money which has been invested in this medium so uh, we find that how the visual medium uh, if we see uh, any visual medium including cinema how they are able uh, uh, to communicate the ideas in a far better manner and uh, films they can also be used in terms of guiding the students and also enlightening them on the various socio economic political cultural and academic issues and we also find that when uh, one is watching films uh, not only dialogues but also symbols uh, which are there in the films they are also very very important because these symbols are part and parcel of a certain social and the historical context and uh, they also generate a lot of emotions and they excite uh, a large number of masses at the same time so from that point of view they play an important role in terms of creating appropriate emotional responses among uh, the audience and when one talks about indian cinema we find that uh, in the development of the indian cinema was during the period uh, of the national movement when india was fighting its war uh, of independence how indians they were engaged in the freedom struggle so we find that uh, some of the films they were influenced by the ideals and the objectives of the national movement and when uh, uh, these films they were interacting with the uh, socio political realities of that period uh, we find that how hindi cinema it was being influenced as well as uh, it was influencing in the situation as well so uh, we find that films or cinema Uh, uh, is not an only not only a source of em uh, entertainment but uh, we also find that how uh, it can also be an important source in terms of uh, writing history and how it also promotes culture fashion and identity so 
uh, in that context when we try to understand cinema or films we uh, find that uh, new and new sources of history writing they have been uh, explored by the historians and uh, some of these sources are based on interview techniques in the recent times and uh, also the oral sources as well. So, from that point of view cinema can be used as a source of history writing as it is a well documented source. And how uh, we also find that during the um, during the national movement, the nationalist aspirations and the motives uh, they were being exhibited uh, on the screen during this time. And uh, we also find that when one is uh, talking about the various fashions uh, and then we find that many a times uh, the kinds of trends which are being shown uh, uh, in the films or for example, the kind of uh, the kind of things which are being used uh, in a certain maybe an attire, maybe certain equipment uh, or some kind of a dress. So, that also become uh, some sort of a fashion or a trend uh, at the uh, level of the society. And uh, from that point of view, they are also carriers of culture because uh, we find that the various kinds of cultural practices which are being shown in the films, uh, th they are also becoming part of the society uh, at different points of time. And how the question of identity is also uh, related uh, with the kind of cinema which we are uh, watching that for example, if one is uh, a native of uh, Hindi heartland, so he will be more concerned with largely in Hindi films. And similarly, if someone uh, uh, is, is belonging to some other language, so uh, he will also wa want to watch. Uh, though that kind of a film. Nowadays, uh, those kind of boundaries are also getting transgressed in the sense that many of the films they are being dubbed uh, in various languages and uh, even the regional cinema from that, that point of view, uh, we find that many of the regional films the way they are being dubbed. So, they are uh, available to the pan Indian audience at the same time and how uh, they have been able uh, to influence the masses as well. So, from that point of view when we uh, tend to understand cinema, we find that how different scholars they have uh, tried to see films and how uh, culture is closely connected uh, with the uh, cinema. And uh, Raymond Williams talks about culture uh, as the way of life and how so many things in terms of dress patterns or food. Uh, our values, whether the moral or the spiritual values, all of them uh, they are part of our cultural practices. And how uh, initial, uh, initial uh, in that way, the people those who were initially associated uh, with the films, and how uh, these people uh, they uh, tried to uh, innovate, they tried to uh, take some kind of proactive steps in terms of uh, becoming some sort, some sort of. Uh, pioneers in the context of uh, the development of cinema. Uh, in that context, we see uh, Harish Chandra Sakharam uh, Bhattavatikar or uh, Seva Dada uh, and how he was concerned in terms of uh, making the topicals. Then Hira Lal Sen and then R. G. Torney who made uh, the film called Pundalik in 1912, uh, which has been referred to as the first film uh, by uh, Feroz Rangunwala. Uh, and uh, uh, we find that these people and thereafter how uh, these people were able to influence the later generations and uh, uh, Raja Harish Chandra which was made in 1913 by Dada Sahab Falke uh, which is considered to be the first indigenous uh, feature film of India. So, we find that how cinema was more or less influencing uh, the world uh, at the same time that the kind of developments which began in France in 1895 and thereafter in India these uh, the arrival of the cinematograph in July 1896 in Bombay. And uh, uh, from there on uh, we find that Indians they got some kind of an inspiration and uh, like uh, Dada Sahab Falke who made uh, Raja Harish Chandra uh, uh, which was released in 1913 and even the uh, the movement uh, the free uh, the leaders of the freedom movement uh, like tilak uh, who bal gangadhar tilak who supported uh, dada sahab falke for his swadeshi cinema so tilak was regularly writing in terms of uh, supporting the films which were made by dada sahab falke and 
it has also been referred that he was also interested in terms of opening a film company along with um, Dada Sa Falke, but that uh, could not that could not happen at that point of time. And uh, 1913 to 1931 is the period of uh, the silent cinema, and uh, we find that thereafter, from 1931 onwards, uh, we find that how sound uh, came to the films, and uh, this uh, was also a period when. Uh, we find that the civil disobedience movement in 1930 was initiated and how uh, Mahatma Gandhi and other leaders of uh, uh, the national movement, they, they, were, uh, they were participating in, in the civil disobedience movement uh, uh, in the Dandi March and the kind of developments which happened after that. And uh, till that time, uh, we have uh, the silent cinema, but si uh, even uh, during that time of the silent cinema, we find that the films, they were being uh, accompanied by uh, the live musicians. Some musicians, they will sit uh, uh, below uh, the curtain where or, or the screen where film was exhibited and uh, they, they will, uh, they, will uh, they will continue in terms of uh, providing some kind of a support. Uh, uh, in terms of music, in terms of the narration of the story. So, all this was uh, happening and we find that uh, in the initial uh, level, a lot of films which were made, they were mythological in nature and they had this kind of a, a religious character to them and how in the story of Raja Harishchand, it was being seen in terms of being parallel to the philosophy of Satyagraha, that how one has to endure suffering with faith. Uh, in the ultimate victory of good over evil. Uh, not only courage, but the spirit of selfless sacrifice was needed to fight the British. So, uh, we find that how uh, such kind of films, they, they were trying to uh, convey the kind of atmosphere which was there in the country. That how leaders like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who had a track record of uh, technique of Satyagraha in uh, South Africa and when he uh, comes to India, he also uh, uh, he, uh, applies his experience of South Africa to the Indian politics. And so, these kinds of ideas, they, they, they were uh, in a way trying to convey what the national movement leaders, uh, they also wanted. And during uh, this time, we see that some of the films, for example, which were made during this time they were also trying to uh, communicate uh, the nationalist ideals. For example, Sikandar, which was made in 1943 and uh, the release of this film, it coincided with the Second World War uh, when it was at its peak. And uh, the atmosphere was also very tense following the Mahatma Gandhi's call for, qu for the uh, Quit India movement in 1942. And how Sikandar was arousing the patriotic feelings and the national uh, sentiments at that point of time and because of which we find that the uh, film was banned in the military cantonment areas uh, because when Porus talks about the driving out the aliens from Bharatvarsh, it could be understood as a reference uh, to the British. So, uh, we find that such kind of portrayals which were in any way inimical to the kind of policies which were followed. Uh, by the British Raj, they were not being liked by the British. And such films uh, which uh, tried to convey any kind of uh, uh, the nationalist ideas, they were being rejected by the colonial censors. Uh, one reference uh, which uh, one can also see was also in the context of one of the films called Kismat, which was made in 1943, where there is a song called Dur Hato Hai Duniya Walo Hindustan Hamara Hai. And how uh, we find that when uh, this uh, kind of a song uh, was played in the cinema hall, it electrified the atmosphere and uh, people they again demanded that this song should be uh, played again and again because of which uh, the British government got alarmed and one of the inspectors was sent to uh, find out that what was the reason why, why such kind of things they were being happening. And uh, the inspector concerned, he saw the film uh, Arvind God and he, he said that the reference was to the Germans and the Japanese because the lines 
uh, of uh, the lyrics of the song they they are referred as tum na kisi ke aage jhukna german ho ya japani so in a way uh, uh, the uh, uh, the kind of reference or the kind of justification which was being provided by the inspector was in this context that the reference was not to the british and we also find that some other leaders for example gandhi uh, who made uh, the issue of untouchability women's emancipation and hindu muslim unity uh, central to the freedom uh, movement and he considered cinema to be a vice uh, and he refused to see films and he only saw one film called ram rajya which was made in 1943 by vijay bhat and thereafter k abbas uh, who was a filmmaker and a journalist as well he wrote an open letter to mahatma gandhi that uh, uh, some uh, that uh, mahatma gandhi he, who had such kind of influence uh, on on the indians and if he will consider cinema to be a vice and if uh, he will show such kind of an attitude towards cinema which was a new uh, new kind of a technological medium then it will be very difficult uh, for cinema to progress and that is how he in a way asks gandhi that he he should be more Uh, the the kind of contribution which cinema is making in the entire world and gandhi uh, should be in a way uh, more receptive to uh, cinema and he should not consider it consider it as some sort of a vice uh, we also find that there were other leaders those who were in a way quite supportive of cinema for example satyamurthy Uh, who was a polit- who was a uh, le- con- leader of the congress party he used cinema for the party propaganda purposes and there were others like nehru who realized importance of cinema uh, lajpat rai was also quite lala lajpat rai was also supportive of cinema and uh, we find that how lala lajpat rai for example uh, talked about the censorship policy the way censors the, they were playing an important role they could play an important role and uh, the Uh, the way indian cinematograph committee which was being appointed by the british uh, the way it was being criticized by lala lajpat rai in the uh, legislative assembly uh, where he talks about that there should not be any kind of a preference which should be given uh, to the imperial films or uh, imperial films or the films which were coming from britain uh, so uh, the leaders they, they also realized this kind of a thing they also realized that the way Uh, british censors they were being operating and some of them very openly supported as i told you earlier that how tilak supported uh, dada saab phalke swadeshi cinema so uh, the leaders they also played an important role in this context even uh, some of the women leaders like sarojini naidu uh, she was quite supportive of cinema and on the other hand rameshwari nehru who was member uh, of uh, uh, the censor committee and uh, she in a way uh, rejected uh, the cinema and uh, wanted some kind of a tighter control over the films so that the youth uh, they should not go astray and uh, some of the other films of that time for example uh, duniya na mane which was made in 1937 which was dealing with the mismar- mismatched marriages in the society where the female uh, protagonist shanta apte as you can see on the screen as well Uh, she exhibits the revolutionary reform spirit of a woman uh, who realizes that emancipation of women lies in their own hands and she makes efforts to overcome her problems so we find that uh, how uh, this film which was made by v shantaram it was able to create that kind of an impact and uh, the film was considered to be way ahead of its times uh, it was made as kunukku in uh, marathi and duniya na mane in hindi and uh, Uh, the way uh, uh, we find that uh, shanta apte refuses to consummate the marriage and finally the person who had uh, married her who was uh, old enough to be her father and uh, he also realizes that he had committed some kind of a, a crime by marrying a young girl and uh, in those times we find that divorces were not all that common and uh, so the, so the only Uh, remedy which he could see was uh, in terms of committing the suicide and uh, making the women uh, that this woman free uh, we also find that how the way british censorship it was operating it was totally reactionary arbitrary and politically inspired 
and it was uh, uh, trying to negate all the democratic ideas uh, which were coming from America and it was also against the revolutionary ideas from Russia and uh, any ideas which were concerned with the labor con uh, capital conflict they were also being rejected. And uh, in this context, a film called Mill or Mazdoor, which was written by Munshi Premchand, uh, where the dialogues and uh, the scenes of the films, they were uh, uh, in a way excised, they were being cut several times. Uh, and we also find that the revolutionary ideas from Russia, they were also not being liked uh, by the colonial censors. And uh, there was a film called Bhakt Vidur, uh, which was conveying the nationalist ideas where the allegorical portrayal of Gandhi's political activities could be seen. Then another film called Rath, uh, which also talks about the Gandhian principles. So, we find that such kind of films which were trying to communicate uh, these kinds of ideas or these kinds of principles, they were being uh, rejected by the colonial censors and they, they were aversive to the democratic or the revolutionary ideas coming from America and Russia respectively. And at the same time, no, there was no clear cut policy in that sense and uh, it was more arbitrary, it was more reactionary in nature and it was also politically inspired as well. And thereafter uh, we see that some of the organizations like uh, Progressive Writers Association and Indian People's Theatres Association, uh, PW and IPTA, both of them they also played an important role and how uh, both of uh, PWA as well as IPTA. Uh, uh, both both these organizations, the people those who were associated with these organizations, uh, they, they also played an important role in terms of the film medium. And uh, we find that how Munshi Premchand, uh, who was also associated with the Progressive Writers Association, and in the context of IPTA, uh, 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 people like Balraj Sahani, for example, or uh, others like Deena Pathak or Shambhu Mitra, how these people, those who were associated with Tipta K. Abbas himself, uh, who also made a film called Dharti Ke Lal, which was produced by Ipta and uh, uh, which was dealing with the, uh, with the Bengal famine of 1943. And uh, uh, how the uh, prob problem um, of uh, Bengal famine, the way uh, it was being created by the British as it was not a natural calamity and the kind of shortage which was created by the British in terms of exporting the Indian grains uh, to their own war efforts which were there in the second world war. And we also find that uh, during this uh, particular period especially in uh, 1947 and after uh, where uh, some kind of a displacement of the people it was happening and uh, because of uh, the partition we find that how people became refugees in their own lands and how they, they were surviving in the refugee colonies. So, this kind of a fear, this kind of a violence, personal pain, loss and uprooting from the native, native place, uh, they are also being in a way shown by certain filmmakers. And how uh, the sexuality and the gender relations where the women's bodies, they became site of uh, conflict between uh, two communities. Uh, this was also being shown in uh, certain films of uh, that time and uh, we find that the kind of literature which was available in concern to the partition of India for example by Sadat Hasan Manto, Ismat Chuktai, Rajinder Singh Bedi, Krishan Chandar, Krishna Sobti and uh, Amrita Pritam and many others those who were writing about uh, uh, the themes of partition and uh, the way the uh, partition was in a way. Uh, realized it created a lot of fear, uh, psychosis among the people, those who were uh, being display, uh, displaced from their own, uh, their own lands. And uh, the way they had to uh, uh, create their own life from the, uh, from the scratch uh, when they came to the new places. So, uh, they, they, this was uh, some kind of a theme in many of the films of uh, that particular period. And this could be uh, consistently seen in the films of Ritwik Kumar Ghatak. Uh, where we uh, find that the way he was being displaced from uh, uh, the region called Eastern Bengal and he had to migrate to uh, the other region. 
and uh, we find that uh, in 1949 there was a film called Lahore which was made and uh, this was dealing uh, with the issue of the women those who were being uh, displaced during that time and how these women uh, when they were being displaced they were uh, uh, they were either forcibly uh, converted uh, to the religion of the people those who had captured them and uh, so the, the, these kind of portrayals uh, they, they were also relevant from that point of view and films like garam hawa which was made in 1971 uh, which was again uh, dealing uh, uh, with the kind of a dilemma with, uh, about a Muslim family, whether they should stay in India or whether they should go to Pakistan. Uh, then uh, Gadar, Ek Prem Katha, which was made in 2001, Pinjar uh, in 2003 and uh, uh, Gadar was dealing uh, uh, with one, uh, one of the issues where uh, we find uh, in the context of the conversion of women. Uh, and similarly Panjar as well where how uh, woman is being converted uh, and she, she is being living in that particular country after being converted uh, to another religion. So, these stories where the, the, the bodies of women they became sites of uh, conflict and how uh, the, uh, the victory could be seen in terms of uh, acquiring uh, these women. So, this, this has been one of the important concerns in the films which are dealing with uh, partition and we also find that how uh, the personal diaries, letters, pamphlets, memoirs, oral sources, all of them they, they are being used in the context of using, uh, in the context of writing history that how uh, they, they are being used as some sort of uh, alternative sources and uh, uh, literature as well as Indian cinema. Uh, both of them uh, they have tried to document these stories in their own way and how these stories they have been received by the audience uh, for example Bhishim Sahani's Tamas uh, which was made in the 1980s uh, so and the other uh, Pinjar also is also uh, based uh, on uh, uh, Amrita Pritam's uh, novel of the same name and uh, we find that such kind of uh, uh, literary writings, such kind of portrayals in the films, all of them uh, they, they provide some kind of a cred credibility to these themes and uh, films like uh, other films like Khamosh Pani which came in 2003 of the Pakistani filmmaker Sahiba uh, Sumar and how uh, uh, we find that her uh, uh, a widowed mother and her young son and her son is blatantly communal. Uh, film was set in 1970s and how the Hindu and the Sikh women they were being converted to Islam and her brother comes to her search in the 1970s and tries to uh, locate her. And uh, we also see that these kind of efforts where the people those who got displaced they could meet uh, some, some kind of efforts they were made in the later times as well. And uh, there is a partition archive. Uh, where uh, the stories of partition they are being preserved in terms of recording of uh, the history and uh, the archiving of the memories of the shared partitioned past uh, they are being there in the partition archives and uh, so in that sense uh, we find that uh, uh, cinema as uh, an audio visual medium uh, which developed during this particular period it played an important role and the films which are made uh, during the colonial period uh, they were not only concerned with the national movement, but at the same time just after uh, partition, just after the partition of India, the kind of displacement which was uh, witnessed, we find that Bombay emerged as a major uh, center of filmmaking. Uh, so, we will continue in our next lecture talking about the other aspects of uh, the audiovisual medium cinema and the kind of developments which happened uh, after independence, uh, this we will try to discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much.